Lemon Amiga present. A play diet video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. This time we'll be taking a look at Walker, the horizontal mech shooter developed by DMA Design and published by Psygnosis in March 1993. This was also an Amiga only title. So the production team for this game coded a severely hard horizontal shooter as we will see and this game is certainly one of those that probably cannot be completed without cheating because the programmers have just made it too damn hard. So let's take a look at the backstory. The year is 2370 and the giant Endalian army is about to crush the Myorns in a decisive battle. The Myorns learn that the enemy has gained the upper hand in three key points in the past and particularly at one point in the future, so they send their very last AG-9 walker unit back to these places, back in time, to stop them. These four scenarios are Los Angeles in the year 2019, the Middle East in 2370, the Great War of 2420, and the first round takes us to the fall of Nazi Germany in the spring of 1945. From here we must take on all enemy from all sides, troops, infantry, aircraft and to make it to the boss at the end of two hard levels. So let's begin the game, let's see that first level in action. We can choose F1 for easy mode or F3 for arcade. The easy mode will quit after the first two worlds are completed. The arcade mode features all four worlds all four of those scenarios in the game. So here we are, this is Nazi Germany, this is Berlin, in the spring of 1945, so uh, as you can see we pilot the AG-9 Walker and our mission is to traverse a very long horizontally scrolling landscape from one end to the other, to split over two levels and destroy everything in our way. To move the walker we must either use a joystick and pull that left or right or we can use the arrow keys or the Z and X keys on the keyboard and that will manoeuvre our AG9 across the screen. To help protect us our unit is fitted with a very powerful shield generator and that can withstand one hell of a knock from those guys before it depletes and we explode. The shield also has a backup shield generator, so even when our main shield goes down, highlighted in the, uh, the green bar there in the corner, that will turn into a red bar when the backup shield is effective, and so we can more or less get through the level without blowing up. So certainly the attack element is more important than the defense element in this game, because we have certainly ample defense in that shield but our attack is limited to just the one weapon and that is the chain machine gun with uh, high velocity, high impact rounds and we can use the mouse to maneuver the cursor uh, the target site there you can see moving on the screen if you then hover that over a specific target and press the left mouse button you will then fire a number of rounds into that general direction and anything which is there will feel the impact of those and hopefully disappear. If you hold down the right mouse button over any target that will then lock on the gun sight and you might notice right at the bottom of the screen it says lock off. When you lock on there the notification at the bottom will change and once you are locked on you will stay locked on to that target until you release the right mouse button. The gun is obviously very powerful and very rapid but it has one drawback and that is the fact that it will overheat if you hold down that left trigger too long and this is represented by the bar on the far left of the screen 
you can see it says temp there and as I hold down the fire that temperature rises in the red zone the fire is very strong by the time it gets to the white zone at the top the fire is uh, less powerful and it also slows down and if you overload the guns fire rate will stop completely and you'll be defenseless unless you let go of that trigger and let the gun temperature cool down you will hear a noise when the osmotic cooling unit is switched on a beeping sound and that is certainly a sound that you will hear often in this game as you constantly overload those guns so that's one to watch out for but to make matters a little bit easier the game does provide you with three lives if you get blown up you will materialize at some point back in time to a point where you weren't blown up so even though this is your last stage e9 walker they will teleport you back in time three times and on the third time that is your last teleport that's your last life and so you'll have to make that last walker last so you won't find any more lives in the game you will not be rewarded with any you certainly can't collect any you have three and that is it each world is split into two levels and if you manage to get halfway through a level if you blow up you'll find that you respawn halfway through the level if not if you don't make it that far then you'll have to start from the beginning and have to do the whole thing again from scratch each stage is made up of static screen levels and these comprise of attack waves which will appear in a specific programmed order and the order of the day is to destroy the enemies which pose the most significant threat and then work on down to the ones that don't really pose much threat and to take on as least amount of damage per static screen as possible and then after every single enemy has been blown away you will then be able to walk onto the next screen and the next there can be any number of screens per level I think there may be at least 15 screens per level later on and as I said there are two levels per world and so we are just about to complete the first level of the first world so that's the uh, last of those trucks defeated and then it's just a wander into the wild blue yonder onto the next level so let's take you through this one this is the second level in the first world and on these uh, levels they usually start off with a load of guys and as you can see I'm trying my best to take those down and the gun is overheating like crazy it can be so easy to hold down the fire button and ignore the gun temperature there when you are trying to mop up guys and if I lock onto the engine there and wait for the last moment to blow that up that means I can pull up the rest of the train and collect extra points each uh, item in the game will give you a different number of points and even the soldiers give you different amounts of points if you blow them up in the parachutes they give you zero guys walking around on the floor might give you 100 points each if they drop down from ropes they're worth 400 points each and if you stomp them under the walkers feet they're worth a thousand points each so even the infantry men take on different points values depending on what they are doing and where they are on the screen so the uh, best thing to do of course is to deal with the most pressing objective on each screen and that's usually anybody that's firing any guns towards us or anything that's firing any missiles obviously takes precedence but on this first level it's fairly easy and it's just a matter of uh, guys firing mortars and a few planes dropping bombs a couple of tanks now and again but you can usually step back and avoid the mortars and if you time that step forward some of those mortars you saw uh, disappearing over my shoulder there sometimes you can walk and time those attacks so that none of the mortars hit and you'll always acquire some level of damage on every section and every one of these static screens so the trick is to keep that to a minimum and then hopefully that will allow you to survive all the way to the end of level boss somewhere at the end of all this it's certainly been a long walk to get there and we're not there yet so sometimes if you blow up those guys you can blow up the trucks but that will only give you 100 points each so you're better off waiting for the guys to emerge and then you can blow those guys up for 100 points individually 
and as I say if those infantry men are on the same horizontal plane as us we can stomp them using our walker legs for a thousand points but sometimes that doesn't work if they are a pixel above or below our feet level then the stomp will not work so sometimes you might be able to get many points sometimes you're just wandering into a firefight and you might lose considerable shield power so always one to watch out for there but as I say on this nice early level the easiest thing to do is to listen for the attack waves the tanks will drone into the screen the aircraft you can hear a split second before they appear so you can usually define on this early world where those attack waves are going to be and I like to get rid of any snipers first of all because uh, they only inflict minor damage but if you don't get rid of those straight away before the main enemy is formed out then you might not get time to deal with those later on. Any guns like that can only hit you at a certain range so if you stay off the screen then they can't hit us. So it's always worth remembering that the player can simply move off to the right hand edge of the screen and avoid the bulk of that major firepower and this is a unique uh, aspect of the game in the fact that the player moves from right to left instead of left to right but uh, well it's not entirely unique but it's certainly uh, a different feature to this game I'll just wade in there and try and get a few more of those kill points and once all the enemies have disappeared it's just a matter of blowing up these trucks that they emerged from and get a few more extra points so what I like to do is to press the left mouse button sporadically uh, release and fire release and fire and that will keep the temperature in the red zone you don't really want it in the yellow zone and then on this particular level I like to stump these guys as they fall down and get all those major points avoiding the bombs of course and sometimes you can't always get them all but get most of them with that tactic and again if you are listening out you'll be able to hear those tanks approaching and the train so time to anticipate that by blowing up the tanks the engine in this case is hard to blow up but you can blow up the second carriage there and what that will do is any infantry guys there are in those cabins will emerge and we can blow those up for a bit more score uh, whilst avoiding that pounding from the aerial attackers there so dive bombers certainly ones to watch out for on this level and then we can mop up the rest of the train and continue so there are a variety of scores available on each level unfortunately the number of enemies don't really change the uh, style of the attack patterns don't really change from world to world and there are only maybe four or five different types of enemies per world and so with the one gun mechanic there dealing with all requests to be destroyed it is uh, often quite uh, repetitive shall we say to complete each level but the attack waves particularly on this first uh, world are varied for the novice player and certainly require you can see I'm on minimum shield there certainly require uh, many plays to get to know these levels and if I blow up that uh, airship that dirigible that should mean the level uh, is now mostly clear that's the sub boss there is still the end of level to go and that's after this bonus round we can blow up these guys fleeing from the area and if we blow up those horses there we can leave the uh, mortars to fire those guns and we can blow those up for a bit more score so yes you can even blow up the uh, can even kill the horses in this game so the uh, reviewers were certainly keen to praise the blood and guts literally on this game and so we get to the penultimate screen of this first world and as you can see it's an onslaught we have to deal with these dive bombers or risk getting pelted with those bombs you can avoid the bombs of course but that means wading into that mortar let's just get rid of it and the ground mortar is there firing maybe they are grenades but they actually sit down to fire you might notice so to me they look more like ground mortars so after that onslaught we have virtually zero shield but we can certainly have enough for the end of level and this is it the end of level boss shall we say even though it isn't a boss it's a two missile silos which we must blow up 
And the easy way to do this is just to tackle all comers as they appear on screen before they pose any threat. And then we have to wait for those missiles to appear. You can see a second energy bar has appeared before our lives. That's actually the health bar of the uh, both the missiles. We'll have to shoot those individually to get that health bar down. So let's begin with the first one. We turn to the trucks. The tank is out of range if we stay to the right, remember. So let's just deal with the uh, enemies as they come. Fire on the left hand rocket and then we turn to the right. You will have to alternate your uh, fire between each one. And hopefully when we get all the way down to the white area there, right at the bottom, they should automatically trigger and we can't blow those up before they do trigger and fly off but as soon as they do we can get rid of that last white from that energy bar and then it's just a matter of cleaning out the infantry and getting rid of the tank the easy way and you can milk a few of these enemies but let's just get rid of that truck let's not bother milking and that's the boss that's the end of world one that was certainly an onslaught but you haven't seen nothing yet this is world two 2019 so they obviously expected LA to look like this in that period of time and so you can see the graphics there if I just increase the gamma you can see the detail which went into the background graphics uh, even though these backgrounds are maybe only eight colors you can certainly see a nice copper effect sky there and with the gamma up you can really appreciate that without that then the levels are much too dark and that was certainly a criticism that people leveled at the game the backgrounds are too dark uh, but they are highly detailed it's certainly not a public domain effort by a long stretch so let's take a look at the design team in lieu of a comparison zone uh, because this was an Amiga only title so this game was jointly designed by Ian Dunlop and Neil Glancy and Ian Dunlop was mostly responsible for the code and the um, intelligence, the attack waves, that kind of thing. And Neil Glancy was mostly responsible for the graphics. So Ian Dunlop went on to hire guns in 1993. And Ian Glancy uh, cut his teeth, first of all, on uh, First Contact, which was a very poorly received game in 1990. And also worked on Tower of Babel in 1990 with a certain Pete, Peter Cook. Uh, who went on to F1 Grand Prix fame with Jeff Crammond, as you might remember Pete Cook appearing in the F1 GP review. So, Tower of Babel there before this. So, Ian Dunlop and uh, Neil Glancy, it's certainly a, a, an Ian and Neil production. So, to help Ian with code, there was a certain Scott Johnson, and he's probably most famous for working with Gary Timmons, uh, for the graphics for Lemmings, the original Lemmings in 91, plus the Oh No More Lemmings, of course, Christmas Lemmings, Holiday Lemmings. So Scott Johnson and Gary Timmons worked together with those uh, Psygnosis sprites, and you can certainly see the Lemmings aspect there as I mow down these guys. Uh, highly detailed, small sprites there. And uh, Scott Johnson went on to work with uh, uh, the same guys on Hired Guns, and then moved over to Macropoles, where he worked on UFO Enemy Unknown and Colonization, both in 1995. So Scott helped with the coding and the graphics of this game. So the graphics were done by Neil Glancy, Scott Johnson, uh, David Halley, Mark Ireland, who went on to do FIFA, the original FIFA in 1994, and Stacey Jameson. And the music was done by Raymond Usher, and the sound effects, well that was another Ian Dunlop and Neil Glancy job. So I think above all else the sound effects uh, really stand out in this game. Uh, if your Amiga had 2 meg of memory, then the option was there to switch on extra sound effects in the game, extra human voiceovers, so the uh, player could hear interactive chat between the bass and the walker, which is strange given that it's uh, across time, but never mind. Uh, I tended to switch that off because that delayed the action and you had to wait for the voiceovers to end before you could get on with the action. So in this playthrough I'm going to use the 1 meg version but even there the uh, sound effects and the 1 meg version are absolutely terrific. Uh, you can turn the sound effects up 
and they will shake the room down. Absolutely no problem about that. Each item has its own sound effect, so you can hear for that and anticipate that appearing on screen. And certainly those very meaty sound effects really increase the height and the tension of this game, really expand it from the normal experience of walking this walker up and down the field. And just some background information to the game, uh, Walker had been delayed on a number of occasions and just like hired guns, mainly because the Psygnosis, the uh, distributors of this game, didn't want to hang around on the Amiga and wanted to close all the Amiga development. So the Walker and hired guns projects were off and on the shelf for quite some time. And during the game's development, the program was originally intended for Walker to have platform stages between the Walker levels so that the players could jump out of the cockpit of this machine and investigate different platforms and shoot guns and that kind of thing. But at the last moment, apparently the uh, production team decided to pull the idea, saying the platform sections were below par and they'd rather have something below par out of the game rather than uh, try and shoehorn it in there so that just basically left the walker sections they made all the attack waves many times harder and just released the games basically with the walker sections so that's basically why walker feels repetitive they did originally uh, almost complete the uh, the game with the platform sections in there but they decided to rip those out so while walker appears polished it's certainly appears that the program has run out of time to improve certain things and certainly uh, only having the one weapon is a drawback in this game um, certainly the programmers should have added different weapons other than the chain gun rockets as a minimum requirement would have been a, a great token even if they didn't include power-up tokens and things like that um, that's why the game feels repetitive, mainly because the programmers didn't anticipate the walking section would be in the whole game, and it ended up being. So, uh, having said that, the walk sections are difficult, and they are certainly no pushover by any stretch of the imagination. So that's the first level of the second world completed, and now we'll take a look at the second level. So. How does this start? Well, it starts with a run and gun. I like to avoid those snipers first of all and get those uh, ninja rope guys that fall down from the sky. And that usually means, as you can see, absolutely no energy loss whatsoever. And that's really what you need. Particularly on these levels where you get a lot of guys falling from the, from the sky there. And as soon as they touch the ground, they will fire volleys of uh, ammunition our way so you really need to avoid those missiles we get maximum score for shooting those down of course but sometimes the gun just overheats and you have to concentrate on what you're stepping on and then prime use of the lock on target function there to try and get rid of those targets as quickly as possible the cars will fire homing missiles which will fire on our last known location so if we move after the missile has fired from the vehicle, uh, the missile will land hopefully behind us or where we were standing a minute ago. And it's the same with these rocket launching trucks as well. We must blow up their fire and they will fire a, a fire bomb towards us at the beginning. And then as soon as they fire their missiles, we can step forward and they should land where we was standing a minute ago. And the helicopters as well, they will sustain a certain amount of damage before they uh, fall from the sky. You can damage different uh, vehicles in this game. The cars and the helicopters, particularly on this level, will uh, sustain enough damage to fall from the sky without actually blowing up. And if you leave those hanging around, then you can blow those up for extra points. And the other nasty thing on these levels are the laser firing tanks and what you have to do is to run alongside those so that the lasers can't hit us. We can target those lasers and we can blow those up before they hit us, but that's difficult. It's just much easier just to walk in parallel with those so they can't get a lock on, they can't blow us up. So with these helicopters, again, I'm invading their firepower and I'm blowing them up so that the red smoke appears above their propeller 
and that means they only have a limited lifespan left before the crash and then we can pick those off for a bit more extra score and seeing the score is a premium in this game maybe 400,000 for a high score it's worth uh, soaking those up and these red kites as well sometimes they can be a bit of a pain they don't really inflict much damage and the guys on the ropes behind us there if you allow those to climb behind the walker they will plant a bomb and that will really knock that uh, damage down there by maybe a third maybe at least a quarter so any guys aiming to plant bombs behind us definitely remove those and you can see me getting rid of the minefield there so that I can walk in parallel with these tanks so that I don't get hit and yeah the guys behind us the best thing to do to get rid of the guys is just to keep walking left and right and hopefully they can be thrown from our walker before they gain enough height to plant the bomb uh, forward or backwards I've known those guys to fall off um, same tactics there by the way just to get rid of that minefield and then get rid of these yeah or uh, sometimes you can aim the cursor very close to the tank and you can block those guys I've even been known to be able to lock on to the guys who are climbing onto my own tank and blow them up with a the lock on I think if you allow those guys to climb up a certain way then they will inflict damage by the mere explosion of you blowing them up and they will explode with the smart bomb when you get, when you destroy those but guys planting bombs only appear on certain screens and once you get used to where those appear that's no problem by the time you get this far in the game you can see all hell breaks loose all the different types of vehicle that the game has introduced us to slowly over the period of the level are now all appearing at once on the same screen and I like to leave the helicopters to last because even though they can drop a, a number of bombs on our heads they are relatively weak and you can outwalk those and avoid those no problem but the levels definitely do get harder as you progress and the average player with a little bit of practice should be able to get through level one without losing life and uh, a dedicated player should be able to get through levels uh, two and three and four without losing a life as I've demonstrated don't forget there are two levels per world uh, it would take a really advanced uh, player to get through to the third world without losing a life and that's what I'm attempting to do and the fourth world in particular as far as I know is virtually impossible and it would take an elite player to even get to world four and as far as I know it's virtually impossible to complete level four without cheating on the Retro Gambler review, he highlights the fact that an auto-fire joystick can be plugged in and you can press the fire button as well as the mouse button to save that gun temperature and that's certainly one way of doing it. If you get a crack, obviously you can have infinite lives and level skip, that kind of thing. But this really is a very, very, very hard game and most of the criticisms of this game have to be said. Certainly not the graphics, certainly not the uh, playability the 50 frames per second no problem at all it's certainly just the level of difficulty which lets this game down and that's compounded by the fact that the experience is just so repetitive uh, but as I say the action always comes thick and fast and we're getting towards the end of the second level we're still struggling to get there we need to defeat one more wave of those red gliders before we get to the boss and so let's just get rid of those guys the shield is actually quite healthy at this point in level 2, it has to be said. And if you have this much shield uh, at this point in the game, then you stand a good chance of getting towards the boss. If not, then you'll have to restart. And as I say, the restart points will restart you in the middle of the level if you get that far. And it will give you full shield, so that means getting to the end of the level is actually much easier. There is usually a way to complete each screen and there are always hints and tactics to avoid things like blowing up these mines to gain progress and sometimes they will be dropped at random from those airborne aircraft and sometimes it's not easy to blow those aircraft up before they lay the mines so the order in which you destroy the mines is often important on these levels sometimes you'll have to remove those uh, particularly with the laser firing tanks there to be able to strafe those on the right side and sometimes you might just want to leave those mines where they are and stay in the right side of the screen 
but unlike the first world the staying on the right side of the screen tactic doesn't always work for very long and by the time you get this far obviously the walker will have to be on the move constantly and again dealing with these enemies in the right order I like to deal with uh, the guys firing guns from the windows before tackling the infantry which come in a wave then the mines and then the gliders so without further ado here is the set lava boss and the first thing you need to do is to blow up its tracks to stop it advancing and killing you you'll notice it has an armored scoop on the front which can be blown up but if you've disabled the tracks you can leave the scoop the uh, pilot will emerge from the gun and you have to aim for his head free aim for his head to blow him up and you can also aim at the gun barrel to blow up the gun and then it's just a matter of killing the guys that fall from ropes and uh, killing the guys that drop things from these red gliders and eventually all the guys from ropes will stop dropping and then that just leaves you with the gliders and all you have to do is to walk left and right avoiding their firepower and as each glider is shot down that will force another one to emerge so if you shoot three gliders down you can expect three to emerge and while the gliders are emerging from that ramp you can shoot that with free aim once again and that will deplete the enemy's damage so those are that enemy's four weak spots the tracks, the pilot, the gun and the ramp there is also a back panel which can be blown up and the front fork as well the scoop at the front can be blown up but that doesn't really inflict any damage the hardest part at this stage is just avoiding those dropping uh, bombs that they drop and again wait for those guys to appear free aim sometimes you can lock on that makes the job much easier but in my experience using free aim to defeat this final boss uh, is much easier so I locked on there but sometimes the lock on locks onto a, a random target which isn't the ramp that you need which the kites are emerging out of so free aim definitely I'd use for that boss and here we go this is world 3 this is the Middle East in the year 2370 so we must have expected the Middle East to still be a hotbed of activity even then and on this level you'll find another unique batch of enemies and transports to blow away uh, bombers there make the first appearance and there's also rocket firing helicopters later on and worse things in between and sometimes it's best to blow uh, the tanks first of all on this uh, third world because they tend to be the most powerful and everything else could be dealt with after that so Walker was produced by the DMA design team which was founded in 1988 by David Jones and Mike Daly. They chose the name DMA from the Amiga programming manuals. DMA stands for Direct Memory Address, which was an integral part of the Amiga's architecture, DMA registers. And so the programming team started on the Amiga with Menace. You remember the old thing? First there was Menace, then there was Blood Money. And then after that, they got together and created the Lemmings series. Uh, Walker came in 93 followed by Hired Guns for DMA design. By 2000 they'd already moved to the PS2 and they released the first sandbox 3D Grand Theft Auto experience with Grand Theft Auto 3 in 2001 and then in 2002 they renamed themselves Rockstar North and continued with the Grand Theft Auto series and the rest of this day is history. So back then they were reliant on a distributor to publish and distribute those games and in this case it was Psygnosis. So Psygnosis began in 1984 after the collapse of Imagine Software and anybody who knows C64 history will know that Ocean acquired the rights to the Imagine label and released games like Yeeha Kung Fu on the Imagine label and so from the ashes of that uh, Ian Hetherington started up Psygnosis with uh, a financial associate together they released Raticus the much delayed game which uh, almost killed the industry in 1987 and then they went on to release Barbarian not the fighting game as we are used to but the uh, platform of Barbarian Barbarian 2 Chrono Quest 
and then Much Later, Agony. And they also work with Reflections to release Brian the Lion and Shadow of the Beast and all the other Reflections games. And of course DMA Design with their Lemmings series. They uh, hand-coded their own Microcosm in 1993 and they imported Silicon Graphics workstations to try and get the perfect look on Microcosm. It wasn't a massive success, so by 1995 they were already on the PS1 releasing Wipeout, which was a massive success, and Colony Wars. And by 1998 they'd been brought out by EDOS, who'd become rich after the uh, Tomb Raider franchise. And then the year later, in 1999, they were bought out by Sony. They released the Formula One 2001 game. And much more recently than that, Sony decided to close down their Liverpool branch and Psygnosis was no more. Back now to the year 2370. And you can see I'm moving my way through another bonus section, which merely requires us to mow down fleeing opponents and cowards will be shot. And certainly on this game, you can't be a coward. You have to wade in there, pick your priorities and dispatch those as quickly as possible and if you get in front of those bikes then they will not fire or if you can blow those up like that but generally if you get in front of those bikes that's the way to avoid them so we should be coming up to somewhere near the last attack wave on this particular level and again they more or less throw everything into the pot to make sure that you don't stand much of a chance but it's not so hard so long as you keep on the move Avoid those targets there to make sure that you uh, avoid the missile batteries raining down from the sky there. And then it's a short walk to the start of a new level and a full recharge of that shield, which is the saving grace really on this game. The game would be very, very, very difficult without the shield. And it is very, very playable, but I can't help feeling that it would have been enhanced with rockets and maybe a few more colours on the background, those eight colour backgrounds there appear drab and they certainly do inspire that kind of atmosphere but on the other hand it really doesn't show off the Amiga's technical abilities. The scrolling, the 50 frames per second scrolling is very smooth throughout and the rendered head of the walker there, each frame has been rendered separately for the head of the walker, that moves around very very fluidly indeed and even though you can't really appreciate that in the heat of battle that mechanic never stops moving it's certainly a nice feature in this very unique game the walker itself reminds me of an ed 209 from the robocop series or maybe the atst walkers from star wars but remains subtly different enough from those to be a lot more attractive and the firepower that comes out of that thing certainly deserves um, attention However, does this thing warrant repeat plays? Well, when I had this in the 90s on the three discs, um, I didn't get, I don't think I got off level one, to be honest, I might have reached uh, world two on the easy mode, and I certainly went through it with the cheats, but there's no point playing the game if you're just gonna cheat your way through it. So I didn't get very far, and I only really came back to this game very, very lately when it came up in the lemon the traditional lemon games competition so after that i got into the game and appreciated it a bit more it is a bit too repetitive for its own good i'll certainly say that but by the time you get onto these later levels they really do become a pain even if you memorize the attack patterns it takes you so long to get here and it's such a long fight to get here that you can't always anticipate where the enemies are going to come from uh, because simply haven't reached this stage of the game often enough to practice it. There are no game codes or access codes or level skips or anything like that in the game, so there are no ways to practice these later levels until you get here. And then, as I say, World 3 might be possible with dedication, and the World 3 boss is certainly easier than the World 2 boss. But heaven knows what the fourth World boss looks like, because I've never made it. So let's get through to another section of the second part of the third world which we are at the moment. The final battle is now approaching and again aim for the tanks and then if you get a break between the tanks go for the uh, gunmen and then the rocket launcher. 
I might admit these levels look quite easy, but bear in mind this is level 3.2 and it's certainly one of those levels which is very very difficult to get off without losing at least one life. So let's speed this game up and return to our traditional way of reviewing these games with the speed up just to show you how far I did get with this uh, playthrough and this is probably my 20th attempt whilst playing the Lemon Games competition it might be my last attempt because I don't think I'm going to progress any further and I'm probably just about halfway through the level uh, the point where the helicopter pilot drops his first load is the halfway point so if you die like this you return to the helicopter pilots and that's midway through the level but look at the state of all this it's wave after wave onslaught after onslaught after onslaught and now I'm on these particular lives and these particular levels how many times am I going to have to get through the same screens and die on the same point how many times am I going to have to destroy the same enemies to get to exactly the same point only to die how many times I mean just look at all this it's incredible that you can get so far with so much energy and yet be vitally two maybe one one or two screens away from the boss now let's just take a look at that boss it's very easy all you have to do is to remove the wheels underneath it and basically shoot the driver in the cab whilst avoiding everything that drops on your head as you can see it requires zero energy so getting to that boss is just the difficult part and it's just impossible why couldn't the playtesters have played this just a little bit more and why couldn't they just made it just a little bit easier to get onto the fourth world but as i say the fourth world is supposed to be impossible uh, i don't think i've seen it without cheating and it must be so long since i've played it i can't remember but uh, the fourth world would have been more impressive if the game hadn't been so difficult and while you watch me waste my last life and get to the same point we'll mosey on over to the scores see Omega gave this game 82% Amiga Power gave it 85 the one gave it 81% and Amiga Joker only gave it 72% complaining of its repetitive nature and the uh, graphics seem rather drab that kind of thing uh, Amiga Computing gave it 87% and Amiga Action gave it 89% saying the, uh, they like the outrageously violent uh, action the heart stomping sound effects the very addictive gameplay they like the fact that the Lemmings kind of style animation was very detailed and they certainly packed a lot into the game the game flowed freely and smoothly but to sum up my some of this I'd probably give this maybe an 85% uh, 90% maybe if it had just a little more variety with the different enemies and the different means of firepower being able to upgrade firepower to lasers or rockets or being able to call in airstrikes that kind of thing wouldn't have been beyond the realms of possibilities for those guys but uh, on one side of it they ran out of time to improve the game on another side of it this game had been shelved for quite some time so mixed bag really it's certainly not a flagship Amiga title even though this was Amiga only so it's uh, one of those titles that is fondly remembered only by Amiga players and that screen is probably the most screen that anybody's ever seen and that's the game over screen and this is me entering my it looks like my ninth high score despite those 20 plays and that's a 400,000 score from me so thank you for viewing the Lemon Amiga play guide to the game Walker and I hope I've inspired you to maybe try this out yourself and give it a blast and of course I hope to see you guys soon when I review my next game whatever that will be thanks for watching